Hello, my Seo Knights. Welcome back to another video where today we're going to be covering chapters 49 and 50 of Kakurabachi. We're continuing this new arc of these sword bearers and trying to rescue them from the Hishaku who are closing in and trying to murder them so that they can gain full access to the enchanted blades in their possession. So, without further ado, let's get straight into chapter 49 where we continue our fight on the train. Honestly, some of my favorite action, se action sequences of all time take places on trains. Um, for example, one of my favorite train um, movies of the last few years is actually Bullet Train. Just because there was, they were able to do so much with, you know, fighting in such a small compartment. Um, another one would be Train to Busan. Just, I don't know, there's something about trains and action sequences that just hits so hard. And maybe it's because of the limitations of the space that you have to become clever in terms of how you fight or how you deal with enemies, especially with enemies that overpower you. And we definitely do get this. In chapter 49, we get sort of a huge fight where people are coming in from the windows and they're attacking like up front, right behind. And we get to see some new abilities as well from this enemy sorcerer. I don't think we get his name, but he uses this sort of blood crane to sort of basically use them as bullets. And it's kind of insane. And it's really cool because when he uses Blood Crane, he uses it to actually injure one of his own um, members of the Hishaku. So that the blood, his blood gets sprayed into Chihiro's eyes. So again, using that battlefield advantage of, you know, using your environment, even if you're, you know, sacrificing your own men to do so. I think that's really, really cool. Um, we get, of course, this awesome duel between the two. It looks like this enemy sorcerer also has a sword as well. So that's pretty cool. I wonder if it's one of the enchanted blades or not. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. It could just be a random sword. Um, it's not like he needs it. He's using um, sorcerer, um, sorcery, so it doesn't really matter. He still has the advantage. Um, but basically, Chiro basically comes to this. Um, Chiro and Hakuri and all of them start to realize that they are in a deadlock with these sorcerers, the Hishaku, because. Although they have full access to the enchanted blades because they're able to wield them, the Hijaku can't, but they can use partial abilities of these blades, and including the sorcery that they also have. So, it's sort of this split evenly. Um, they still have like a lot of skilled fighters too to balance out the playing field, so um, it's really neck and neck with this fight. Um, and there's a really cool point where um, he basically tells um, Chihiro to that he has this fight and Jiro basically sacrifices himself like Uraha um, tells him to like you know continue the fight because he believes in him um, and especially with the stuff that happened with his father um, Jiro basically takes that one sorcerer and pushes him out of, uh, out of the train in a really cool way um, and basically takes the fight outside and it's a moving train too so it's like a really cool thing and so in chapter 50, we actually see Mr. Ura and um, Hakari. <laughs> it's really, it's a funny moment because um, you just see two of the, um, I I'm forgetting their names, but the government agency, they're drawing something on the ground in front of the train. So they just step off and they're like, oh yeah, um, are, we're going to try and go straight to the next sword bearer. And that's Mr. Samura. And so right when they step off the train, they went, it almost like they fall through the floor. <laughs> And there's like a splurk sound effect. So they're basically transported instantly there. And we actually get to see it's uh, Senkusuji Temple. Um, just seeing the different like, you know, environments, different locations. It's just really cool. And it adds a lot because especially when you have big scale fights like this, changing locations and keeps it interesting. And I, I appreciate that from Kakurabachi. Um, and then we get introduced to, I think, gonna be my fan favorite. I think a lot of people are gonna like it, Mr. Samura. Mr. Samura literally has two scars going down his eyes, and you can clearly tell that, you know, he's blind. <laughs> he's a blind man. But I don't know, it's just something about, you know, something badass about, you know, the blind man who can hide in his senses. I mean, look at Daredevil. Look at, um, uh, what was it, that one character from Rogue One? Um, you know, the person who plays it, man. Um, just the idea of being impaired, 
yet you, you can use your other senses to still be a badass, I think is just so cool. And you definitely get Mr. Samra coming in, and he makes a really funny joke too. He's like, long time no see, while staring at Hawkery. <laughs> I thought that was like a really funny, um, <laughs> funny gag. That was like, you know, played very seriously, but, you know. <laughs> and like, he also like touches uh, Hawkery's face. He's like, he's not Chihiro. He smells like Chihiro, but he's not Chihiro. Um, Chihiro. Because, you know, Hakuri always hangs around Jiro. I thought that was really funny. Um, but yeah, it's just sort of like a fun gag to meet Mr. Uh, Samura. And we sort of get sort of like... Um, like sort of an interesting character trait about him. Where he's able to recognize people because of his other senses. So he was one of the first people to know that, you know, that uh, Chihiro's father actually had a son. Um... And it's really weird, but like it, he could just tell based on smell and by, you know, feeling people, he can tell like differences in facial features. So that's how he can sort of have that advantage. And I think it's really cool. Um, this is a really cool person, like a really cool characteristic about him is that he's very observant despite, you know, him not being able to see. And yeah, so basically they come in and they go back and Jiro's still, you know, fighting. <laughs> Jiro's still like somewhere in the city after he like took out that one sorcerer off that train and you know he's gonna fight head fight him head on. And there's actually a really cool moment near the end of the chapter where Mr. Samura basically says, Look, they're gonna come, they're probably going to attack us next. But don't worry, we got this. And he has like a really cool pose, like no worries. That just goes to show that, you know. No matter what happens, you probably know that he has it, right? There, there's no way that they're going to come in and do anything because Mr. he just has that look where he's like, they, they can come, they can come in and attack, but they can try, <laughs> you know? They can try to, but we all know how it's going to play out because clearly it seems like he has um, so much going for him in terms of his strength, you know? That, like, humble strength, I think, is just so cool, so... Um, it's, I want to see how, we got to see a little bit of how Mr. Ura, uh, Ura, is it Uraha? I don't know how to say it. It's Uraha. U R U H A. I think I'm saying it right, right? Mr. Uraha. Um, and Mr. Samura, basically, we got to see how he fought, but I want to see how Mr. Samura fights. And I know he's probably going to go insane. And what's interesting about Kakarabachi right now is since we're in this sword bearer arc where we're trying to rescue them from assassinations, I'm wondering if we're going to give them the enchanted blades or rescue their enchanted blades within this fight and give them back to their rightful owners. And as a result, I wonder if we're going to see them actually use the swords in play. Or is something bad going to happen and they're going to get massacred and now Jiro has to rescue them with, you know, the Hishaku having the full strength of these enchanted blades. So it's going to be interesting to see where it goes from here. I will say these two chapters, there was a lot of good action sequences. Like I said, I love everything with the train. Just a train fight. I love a good train fight. However, I feel like this is more of a setup chapter more than anything. It reminds me of the Rakuzachi in the early stages where nothing really bad happens. But nothing amazing happens. It's almost like they're trying to set up um, the next big arc. And it makes sense because we're still in the very first few chapters of this big arc. So I'm not complaining or anything. But what I will say is um, they are adding, you know, the Saint Tin War, giving more, you know, context to what happened 18 years ago. Um, you know, what the purpose of the Enchanted Blades were, what type of people who fought back then were in this whole conflict, and just, you know, adding that context, building it up, adding meaning to the fight going on in present day, I think is very, very important, especially when you need to learn about, you know, the Swords Eternal Contractors, who they are, who they are as people, why did Shiro's father choose them, and how are they going to how are they going to have a relationship with Chihiro? Like, what are their what is their relationship to Chihiro? Because he is, you know, his father's kin, and I think that is going to be the most interesting part of Kakarabachi going forward. And I'm excited to see it. Not I'm gonna be honest, not the most exciting couple of chapters. I'm probably gonna give it in terms of Kakarabachi's levels 
of just quality. I think this is a 7 out of 10 for both chapters. Nothing bad. It does a lot of great things. I just think it's an average chapter that is doing a lot of things right to escalate the situation to something even better. So it's heading in the right direction, but in terms of what these chapters accomplish, in terms of great action sequences or major revelations, it's not there yet. But it's building the block. It's making the build. It's putting the building blocks down to get to that point. So, um, yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it for my Kakurabachi um, chapter reviews. Um, let me know what you guys think uh, in the comments below. If you disagree with my point, if you agree, um, how do you feel about this current arc? Do you think this is gonna be the best arc of Kakurabachi, or do you think it's going to be, you know, the second best or the worst? Let me know what you think, cause I love to have conversations like this and. Um, yeah, that's gonna be pretty much it. I just love talking about Kakurabachi, and, uh, it's very simple, very easy. <laughs> and, uh, I'll catch you guys in, um, in two weeks for the next, <laughs> next two chapter drops.